What? What is this? <laughs> What is going on TRC fans? Today we are back in Denver, Colorado and I have something super unique and super special to show you guys. Right behind me here, I have Kevin and his 1972 Plymouth satellite, but this thing is swapped out with something that is not conventional, especially in a car like this. So let's go check it out. Hey, man. how's it going? Dude, thank you so much for bringing this out. I'm, I'm super happy to be here. Uh, what exactly are we looking at here? Well, this is my 1972 Plymouth satellite, but now I call it Electrolyte. And why is that? Well, this is now a Tesla swapped Plymouth satellite. It has a P100D drivetrain with a 100 kilowatt hour battery, a ludicrous drive unit in the rear. Wow. <laughs> but none of the safety features. It's still all muscle car other You're than kidding. that. You're kidding. So yeah. how long did a build like this take you? This took about a year and a half. So okay. I, I, the, the original drivetrain did not work. So I pushed it in the garage a year and a half later, drove it out on electricity. Well, cool, man. Do you mind popping the hood for us Absolutely. to see what, what's, what's under this hood? There we go. I call this my big block. What? <laughs> so the battery pack is out front. Yep. So That's this is wild. Uh, there's 10 of these modules up front. There's another six in the rear. So wow. uh, there's four on top here, another box of six below. These are all from a Tesla uh, P100D okay. Model S. And so there's 16 of these wired in series to get your 400 volts uh, to get max power out of the motor. Wow. So do you have a background in like electrical engineering or anything like that? Or is this I don't. just kind of a... I uh, just a lifelong gearhead, okay. you know, and um, I wondered if you could go fast with this stuff. I've done all the other things, diesel and gas and turbos and E85, and uh, this was just the next thing to try. Wow, that's crazy, man. So are there any benefits to running something like this versus a normal gas motor? I mean, what is your what is your consensus on this? Like, you know, obviously this is a very controversial swap. It is, yeah. Um, I've made some new friends. I've made a lot more enemies, <laughs> but uh, I had to find out if this was a good idea. Okay. You know, we all have that fear, like, is gas going to go away someday? What do we do with our old cars? Right. And I had to put my money where my mouth was. Let's try it out. Okay. And I've got about 5,000 miles on the car now. I pretty much daily drive it, which makes sense with these uh, mm. gas prices. Electric cars have the advantage at high altitude. They yeah. like hot, high density altitude. We don't need air. Exactly. So less resistance is actually a benefit. Uh, the nice thing about electric motors, you start at peak torque mm -hmm. and then it'll slightly taper about five seconds later. Okay. So as far as a street fighter, uh, a drivable car, it's mm -hmm. super fun because it's, wow. it's always right now. All right, guys, we are inside the Electrolyte. This yes, is, that, what a cool name for, oh, such, thanks. for a build, man. That's so cool. And I love how you like, is this 3D printed? It is, yep. Yeah, so you just put that on the dash. That's really cool. Oh, thanks. That's awesome, man. So is the car on? It's on. Yeah, we're running. Oh my God. Actually, there's a red light out there you can see on the... Okay, okay. So that's the only indicator. I mean, obviously all the lights are on. Yeah, itself, and but... once it shows drive and then I've got the soft switches down here. So okay. you can actually use the app to shift or you can use the, uh, the hard switches. Either wow. way it works. That's really cool, dude. And then do you have that set to a backup camera yeah it's backup camera that's really cool okay cool so what do we do we just we just go i don't know you want to go <laughs> so this spins under full throttle just from yeah, a dig obviously yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then i can line lock it if we want to get stupid okay so, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, whatever you want to do man this is uh, we, we can do more than one so we'll just uh we'll just see what you think okay all right i'm in i'm ready okay i'm locked in all right let's go whoa <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> that's the weirdest thing that I've ever done. That's, that's, huh? There, there's no sound, there's only forces. Okay, so for, for reference, I've never ridden in a Tesla. Oh, okay. I've never, oh, well, I guess I've ridden in one, but it was like one of the base models. This thing's quick. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you start with peak torque. What in the world so you, is this thing, so, dude? So you gotta roll onto it, otherwise it'll spin. Otherwise so, it'll spin. Yeah, so we'll just try to hit it this time and okay. see what happens. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, I'm 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 locked in. God! What? Oh my 
my god so we pulled about uh, 1220 amps at uh, 400 volts wow. so i'll let the nerds do the math on that that's crazy dude what this is something i'm at a loss for words i don't know it's, what in the world it's like being inside an rc car it one of those yeah. crazy little rc yeah. cars this is wild what the hell it's just so much fun it's just okay. endless okay and so what does line lock do so line lock um that's going to lock the front brakes okay so um yeah, let's, let's see what happens. Are you rolling? <laughs> what? What is this? <laughs> oh, wow. And that's 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 the smell of, of burning tires, baby. Let's... Yeah, this is hot rodding. I mean, look what happened. Wow. Over here. Oh, my God. And now we're in the future. Wow. <laughs> like I said, this is something I've never experienced. And like, this is a treat, man. And you want hot batteries, um, so I've got a heat mode now that I didn't have then. Mm -hmm. The Ludacris cars, the Plaid, they all superheat the batteries to get the resistance low, get more voltage to the motor, that means more horsepower. So wow. I never uh, knew that. Yeah, it's wild stuff, I didn't know either. So now I've got the, the race mode installed. How much does it weigh? It weighs 43.58. <clears throat> okay, so it's pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy. A big block car was about 4,000, yeah. so, uh, but it's 600 pounds lighter than the Tesla I got the parts out of. Wow, So okay. it, that's kind of wild. And um, the the rear batteries and motor give it a rear bias on the weight so it's 55 percent rear weight now really so it completely changed the handling of the car okay okay yeah. so it definitely has like way better grip on off the line and stuff like that exactly so you did this all yourself i did yeah this was just in my normal garage i live in suburbia fighting around kid bikes and, and everything <laughs> that we all have you know but right. uh, we made it happen wow that's crazy man so this is a 72 and i know this looks a lot like a roadrunner so can you explain the difference between this and like a roadrunner or yeah or absolutely like so it this is uh, what they called the fuselage body. And this was a two year only body style, 7172. It was a satellite, a Roadrunner, or a GTX. Okay. The, the satellite was kind of the, uh, like your grandma would buy, you know, right. it had the creature comforts, a little better ride, super quiet exhaust versus the Roadrunner with the bigger motors. Okay. Um, any reason that you chose this one in particular or? So I wanted this car my whole life. Daisy Duke drove a, a Plymouth Satellite. She had this exact body style season two until Bo and Luke wrecked it. Uh, it's kind of fun to go watch the old episodes. But <laughs> ever since then, I was hooked on this body style and it took me about 25 years to find the right one. Okay. I got it local in Denver. Uh, bought it from the original owner on Craigslist. Very nice. Wow, that's crazy. So it's a clean example and... Yeah, the guy, he was a paint and body guy. So he had just finished the paint. Um, wow. But the whole drivetrain needed to be gone through. Okay. Um, I did a lot of rust repair underneath, under the hood. This is so unique. And I love the American racing wheels, keeping the, the muscle look on the car. Right. It looks great. I'll, I'll tell you that much. Oh, thank you. I used an entire Tesla subframe. So from brakes to brakes, that's all Tesla. You're kidding. And so these are on the ludicrous cars and that's a 14.3 inch rotor. And so what I wanted to do is make it match in the front. So I put 14s in the front okay. and then uh, to get the, the picture right, I've got 20 inch rear wheels, 19 inch front for a little okay. bit of stagger. Okay. Uh, 285s in the rear, 275s up front. Okay. And what tires, what tires are you running on? These are uh, the Nitto um, 555 G2 street tires. Okay. Nice. Nice. So it mounted under the car, almost like it was built for it, four bolts and it just drops out of the car. It's That's amazing. Wild. So there was one problem with mounting the whole subframe underneath. I couldn't fit springs underneath the car. So I had to go to a, a cantilever setup in the oh, trunk. Oh, wow. Dude, I didn't know this was in here. Yeah. This is awesome. Holy crap, and it looks like a fuel cell, but you can tell, I mean. It kind of is, right? It is. It is a fuel <laughs> cell, yeah. So th there's six more, the, the modules, just like up front, there's six more back here. Okay, okay, very nice. And you've got like an entire box around it. And so what is this orange box right here? This is all the high voltage uh, contactors. Uh, so don't touch anything in here. Anything orange <laughs> can kill you. So. Um, 
what we have in here, we've got uh, a pre-charge relay with a resistor, a main motor contactor, we've got our fast charge contactors, and then uh, some of the fast charge communications. Okay, okay. So you can literally just pull up to like a Tesla supercharger? I can't use Tesla, but okay. I can use Chatamo, which is kind of like Electrify America, ChargePoint, all the other cars. That's interesting. Yeah. Why can't you use Tesla? They are very stingy with their, te their, their charging. <laughs> Only their cars, and even if you wreck one of their cars, they'll lock it out. You're kidding. Yeah, because they can't control it anymore, you know, if something got damaged. Wow. Um, if you damaged a battery and you had a weak cell, they don't want you, you know, putting all that power to it. And then you've got a whole bunch of wiring under there, so what's, what's all that? Yeah, so back here, uh, let's start with this gray box back here that's the onboard charger so i give it 240 volts like out of a welder plug that will charge my battery pack it takes all night it takes about 10 hours if it was a, a completely dead battery and that's managed by this other silver box looks like a uh, amplifier that's the battery management computer okay and so it it handles everything that has to do with the battery in the car this other wiring uh there's some relays these main contactors here i've got a heater like a heater core okay i've got a battery heater i've got the air conditioner um charging and then also a dc dc converter because i still have a 12 volt battery <laughs> oh my god you and do so that's crazy you have to charge that so you actually pull 400 volts step it down to 14 and it's like having an alternator and then uh we talked about it this is a plymouth uh satellite mm -hmm. but this plymouth has a charger which i just showed you back there okay and then, uh, so i use the charger plate and that's where we plug oh in the that's chargers. so sick so we've got ac dc so this is what you would charge with at home uh, you plug okay. it into any wall outlet or 220, and then this is the fast DC charge, and that's a direct DC input, high amperage. So automatically we get in, I see two tablets on the dash. Yes, sir. Um, so what can you tell me about those? So these are just your run-of-the-mill Samsung tablets. Okay. Um, what I did is, this is the original Plymouth dash, and I wanted to keep the wiper location and the headlight switch. Okay. But I wanted all the modern data. Um, from the the battery management system and from the tesla drive unit so okay. this is using the torque app that you can use in any car and it's got a bluetooth uh dongle on an obd2 port that's from the battery management so i know everything about the battery pack we've got our voltage our state of charge i know how many amps we're drawing i've got my high and low temperatures my high and low cells this is all 96 cells in the battery pack. Wow. So we're all within about a hundredth of a volt. And um, I know exactly where these are located in the car. So if I saw one stray, I can just pinpoint it and swap it out. Wow. That's crazy. That's the, I guess that's the benefit of building something yourself, right? Exactly, yeah. Where you know where everything is. Right, yep. And otherwise, I would have to say this looks just like a normal Plymouth satellite. The back seats are still here. The the seats, are these original seats? These seats are heated leather, but I kind of made them, I wanted the size of the original mm -hmm. high backs. Um, everything else is factory reproduction. So wow. Just got bought all the parts this off This is them. really nice. I've never seen a headliner like this. It's like leather or? It's actually a, a reproduction vinyl, but this is the old school. It's a hung and stretched uh this was i tell you what the whole car you know i did a lot of learning mm -hmm. i was most stressed out about doing the headliner You're kidding. <laughs> but it came out okay is this your gear shift right here yeah so um <laughs> i had to make some decisions was i going to make this like a car was i going to make it look like an engine was i going to put fake sound for exhaust and what i decided to do is just this is what it is so right. I'm, I'm only going to use the controls it takes to run an electric car so we have an electric parking brake Okay. And then uh, to go, I have a start switch. So when I push the start switch, it's now firing up the, the Tesla drive unit. Oh, I heard it click. So that it did, <laughs> it did a two step there. It did a slow charge through a resistor. And then once all the capacitors in the inverter were charged up, it went to the main contactor. And okay. now we can give it full amperage. And then it shows us here in neutral. Um, so I, I printed this. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say that looks 3D printed. Yeah, and then um, foot on the brake. And if you wanna go forward, it's just a momentary push and then we're in drive or you can go to reverse. So I see this little dial right here. So what is that down there on the bottom? Uh, all, the, all those knobs and stuff. Yeah, so I've got a brightness adjustment for the, um, the interior lights. Okay. I'm gonna be adding more lights. So I just added, these are PWM controllers. And then uh, I've got line lock. Uh, down here is race mode. Wow. Um, that's gonna preheat the battery. And I'm probably gonna add a chiller for the motor too. I'll just have it fire up the AC and ice the motor down. Okay. So if I'm in the staging lanes. White and yellow, those are for the uh, the front headlights. Okay. I've got uh, fog light high and low. This is a Bluetooth stereo. You know, I, I didn't need a big head unit. I figure you just run music off your phone anyway. Right. So I got right. just a small Bluetooth unit. Okay. Power windows, uh, USB. And over on this other far side, this is for the HVAC. I've got a thermostat 
So this will run the heater and the air conditioner. And I needed a variable, variable speed controller for the AC. Okay. I, I can run the AC pump max on hot days or slower on, on just you know lukewarm days right. so I don't have to draw as much current. Okay, very nice. And what, so I, I guess everyone's wondering, what is the range on one of these cars? So this is a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's the biggest one Tesla has right now. Um, in this car, normal driving, I'll go 300 miles. Wow. Yep. Uh, spirited driving, you know, knock it down to 250. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't know, Kevin also has another car. Um, he mentioned it earlier. It was your what? I have a 1969 Dodge Dart. And, and that it, was, was that your original car? That's my first car. Actually, my family bought it when I was about nine. So I've been in the backseat of that car pretty much my whole wow. life. I bought it when I was 14. I've been working on it ever since. Okay. And uh, I still love it. As a little treat, he brought it for us here. So we're gonna go take a look at that. All right. All right, guys, so we're about to head out and uh, see how this thing stacks up against your car. Against my car. <laughs> how your car stacks up against your car. Was well, it smart to go right. electric? Exactly. So I want to ask you before we go and, and, and do any hits or anything like that, what yeah. is your consensus on electric versus gas? I mean, what do you prefer? You own both, so. So uh, if, if that one hadn't, if I didn't have the Dart, I wouldn't have done this because I still love the sound, I love the smell, yeah. and so you, that's gone, exactly. obviously. So you have to replace it with something, and it's its the forces that the car puts on you. Okay. And so it, it kind of bridged that gap, and I love the instant torque. Okay. It doesn't matter if, what stoplight I'm at, who rolls up next to me, I'm ready to go. I'm always in the perfect gear with the turbo spooled in this car. There, there's no guesswork. That's that's a really good way of putting it, and I, you know, I hadn't really thought of it that way. Um, if you had to pick one, to daily drive for the rest of your life. Which one would it be? I gotta say, it's it's the Plymouth now. You think so? Yeah, wow. it is. Yep. I love the Dart, but this one is more fun. This is the easiest interview I've ever done inside a car while driving. <laughs> right. It's so quiet. Yeah. <laughs> All you can hear are my old car rattles. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Fifty. Oh my God! What the hell? I mean, this is bittersweet. I love that car. It's, <laughs> that car's fast. Wow. Oh, man, I love hearing the turbo in that car. Oh, yeah. Woo! We'll let him get a head start this time. Oh my God! <laughs> and that thing's not slow by no. any means. <laughs> wow, guys. This thing just beat a 700 horsepower Dodge Dart. <laughs> Handily. Gave him, gave him a head start. And this thing, wow. I, I'm speechless. I am too. I had no <laughs> idea what was gonna happen. <laughs> that was a lot wow, of fun. You just reeled him in. I did. That's yeah. crazy, man. If it was anyone else, they'd wonder how I did it so quietly. Exactly. All right, guys, in Mexico for the dig. Let's do it from a, a dig. You ready? On you. Oh. Imagine how good this thing looks rolling. This is awesome. 
This is a treat, man. Thank oh, you so this much. This is so much fun. I never thought I'd be like excited about an electric car. <laughs> right? Never. I didn't either. This is the first one I've driven. You know, I, I just wanted to do it to see if it would be cool or not. I'm speechless. I'm speechless, man. This is so sick. So this is your original car? This is, this is my very first car. So this is a 1969 Dodge Dart. My family bought it in the mid 80s. And then I bought it when I was 14 from them and I've had it over 30 years. Wow, so this is definitely your baby. Like, it this is. is it. Absolutely, yeah. I had an old timer tell me once, never sell that car. And that rings true, you know, <laughs> I think about that all the time. So this has been through multiple phases. You know, I was just a kid when I bought this car. So uh, I did the, the things that you try to do. I took the two barrel off the small block. I went to a four barrel, mm -hmm. different things. Uh, eventually I went to a bigger, uh, from a 318 to a 360. But I always wanted a 340. Uh, I finally got the 340, and then uh, I thought it was fast until I got beat by a Subaru. Oh. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I realized I needed boost, especially at this high altitude. Right. So I uh, went ahead and put a turbo on it. And what size turbo is it? It's a 66 millimeter uh, Borg Warner, um, just an off the shelf turbo. Okay. And, and it, it seems to suit it pretty well. And how much boost are you running? Uh, 16 pounds. Okay. So yeah, this is definitely a far cry from whatever that thing is. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, totally different worlds here. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, geez, this looks amazing, man. Oh, thanks. God, it's really, really clean too. So this is a 340. So this motor is a 19, uh, 1969 motor. It fits the car, but it's not a numbers matching motor. Okay. This is a 318 car. Okay. It's a for factory forged crank. It's all forged bottom end, 10 and a half to one compression. Wow. But I'm still running 16 pounds of boost. So uh, I opted for E85 so I can okay. keep the timing up. Very nice. Um, motor itself is probably close to 700. Okay. Um, and then I'm running a big overdrive uh, transmission and 355 rear gears. Okay. What exact trans is that? So this is uh, the 46 RH. So okay. it's kind of like a Dodge truck transmission before they went electronic. Okay. It does have lock-up torque converter um, and then the overdrive gear. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. So it's a nice little street cruiser, but you can uh, you can definitely get on it if you want to. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I love street cars and I love old cars. So they're, they're I call them street fighters. You know, okay. I, I can have a little bit of fun if I need to. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I love the way you kind of modernize the look of the car with the halos and all that kind of stuff. And I think one of my favorite things is the interior. So you mind if we uh, go look? Yeah. Let's that? check it out. This interior is gorgeous, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, you know, I love green and white. Like you said, uh, I wanted to kind of complement the outside. So uh, these are all original seats. I just had them custom recovered. Wow. But still original headliner, original dash, except for this is a skin. Uh, the original Dart had kind of a, a long, flat set of gauges, but I really like these round uh, autometer gauges. Kevin, man, thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate you. Guys, where can everyone find you on online? So I'm Mr. Mopar Man, MR Mopar Man, and I'm on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. And the whole uh, you can see the whole build on this car. Okay, very nice, man. You guys make sure to go follow Mr. Mopar Man on all the social media platforms. Give him a huge shout out. Thank him for coming out today. I know I'm super thankful. I really appreciate you, man. Thanks for putting uh, us together. Thanks for, oh, thanks to Clint for driving the, uh, the dart and getting smoked. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's, I think that's where we're gonna leave it today, guys. So nice. be sure to hit like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you get notified every time we upload. We upload all the time, crazy cars like this. If you guys haven't seen this channel before, you're missing out. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Kevin, thank you again. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time.